Adam Five. There were times when I thought I couldn't last for long. Now I see I'm able to carry on. I'm coming and we'll change me. It's been a long, a long time coming. Adam Fightfield, everybody. Amazing. Thank you. So, it's so funny. I was just playing that song earlier today. <laughs> just like that, by the way. Yeah. With two fingers. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> ah, life is good, is it not? <clears throat> so, it's good to be, it's good to be here. Um, for so many reasons. A few of us were in St. George last weekend uh, for an amazing and wonderful event, but it was hot, hot <laughs> right? Otherwise, it was fabulous. Our, our colleague, uh, my colleague and our sister community, uh, Reverend Josie de los Santos, was ordained last weekend, and so she asked me to come down and officiate for her ordination ceremony and speak at their community. So it was really, really lovely. My friends Larry and Anita were there. We just had a really sweet time. It's, it's wonderful. You know, it's easy sometimes for us to feel isolated, like we're the only ones here. And so when we get to be with other communities of like mind, it's very wonderful. So we've begun a, a new series this month. Um, Across the nation, across the world, centers for, for spiritual living are using common themes. And so we come up with, they come up with these themes and titles, and then I change them. <laughs> and uh, I read their sermons. And I told somebody, somebody asked me at this ceremony, like, now are you using the sermons that you've been given? And I'm like, I can't even follow my own notes. How am I, you know, how am I going to follow somebody else's? So, but, you know, I love the titles, and there's always some inspiration. So, this, this month's theme is on the freedom from discord, which is a part of uh, Ernest Holmes' belief statement. He believes that all people are eventually to experience freedom from all discord, which is lovely. It's a lovely thought. That if we truly knew who we were or who we are, we would recognize our inherent spiritual nature. We would live more fully from that nature. We would experience peace, joy, harmony, love, and abundance all the time. You ready for it? Yeah. Cool. Well, we're gonna have a little. We're gonna have a little chat about that. So that's the vision, right? The vision is always the greater something, and then there's how we live our lives, and sometimes. The way we live our lives or the, what we manifest in our lives looks different from the vision we hold. So we want to look at that a little bit today uh, around an idea of called as within, so without. It is written that who we are inwardly expresses outwardly into our world. You see, what I know about our teaching the teachings of new thought, and there's you know, quite a body of work now. Um, what we teach on Sundays is not that hard to find anymore. You can go to any really good sales seminar or anything else and find the power of mind to create conditions. So what is becoming more known to greater numbers of people is that the way to have our lives be fulfilled is to be clear inwardly so that it can be expressed outwardly. Now, I know there are about 
10 billion messages a day that come to us that gives us just the opposite. That when your conditions change, in other words, when you have more money, then you're going to be abundant. When you have a person in your life, you're going to experience love. When the whole world settles down and stops all this craziness, then we'll have peace. The problem with that is it's hard to get anybody else to behave. <laughs> Have you noticed that? Nobody else wants to do their part. It's like, here, I've assigned you my happiness, and you're just messing with me day in and day out. Stop it. Stop. I want to experience joy. So the teachings say that if we can have an inner experience of peace, we can have an outer experience of peace. That if we can have an inner experience of abundance, we can have an outer experience of abundance. And let us be clear, abundance is not necessarily money. Sometimes our most abundant moments, abundance really is about being in the flow of life. And so sometimes that comes about in unique and wonderful ways. <clears throat> so you ready for this? Okay, well, that's two of you. If you want to... If you want to... <laughs> If you'd like to just come sit right up front here in the reserve seats, I'll just talk to you and the rest of you can just... So are you ready for this? Okay. I'm all ready to rock your world, right? After today, nothing will be the same, but, you know, no, I don't want to have my, you know, I don't want to have my life work, no. All right. Thank you. You're a little more lively than, I don't know what, I don't think the, I don't know what was the early service. They were all like on quaaludes or something here. Like. They're always a little more calm than this group, I will say. This group always has more time to get a little more caffeinated, I think. So, <clears throat> so let us assume then, if this is true, that our inner life is reflected outwardly into our outer life. And so one of the things that I have personally witnessed, and I know some of you have had this experience, is you have an insight, you have clarity, you have an aha, and you move into action around your higher calling, and then something happens. Usually, it has a lot to do with us. We call it self-sabotaging behavior, and it's never conscious, it's never intentional, but we all do it. So we're really moving forward, we get sick, or something happens. So I pulled off my shelf a wonderful book, which um, was perfect for me at this moment in my life. It's called The Big Leap. We did a whole series on it a while back, but a uh, fabulous book. Big Leap, Gay Hendricks. If you don't have it, get it. It's just one of those books you should have in your library. And Gay Hendricks, who's worked with people in transformational ways for years and years and years, talks about this idea that we all have a higher vision of who we are and what is possible, and to move into that, we have to make the big leap. But he says, we also all have a common problem. And the common problem we all have is our ULP. Our ULP is our upper limit problem. So every one of us, it's never a conscious thing, but every one of us has an upper limit to what we believe we can be, have, do, or become. Right? So I have a friend who makes $75,000 a month. Now, pop quiz, what just happened for you? What opinions do you hold? What decisions do you make? What just went through your mind about my friend who you've never met who makes $75,000 a month? <laughs> just not about him. I just wanted, you know, right? Some of you went, cool, how do I do that? Some of you went, wonder what they did to get that, right? It's too much. It's not fair. Oh, yeah, let's get real. Let's just lay it out here, right? So just 
You see, we, we all have these unconscious beliefs, and we live from those unconscious beliefs, but we don't know we ha- we're not consciously aware of the beliefs, so we just think it's our reality, or we just think it's reality, even worse. It's okay when we think it's our reality, not so good when we think it's reality. Um, so here's the deal. We all have this common problem. So Gay Hendricks talks about this idea that what we want to, there's four ways that we can show up in the world, that we can live, behave, and express our lives. And he says there's a zone that we can live from, which is the zone of incompetence. Some of us are very familiar with that, right? It's just the thing where we're just not good at stuff. Now, it's different for everyone, but sometimes we try and do, I cannot believe how much time I spend sometimes doing things that I'm perfectly unqualified to even mess with, <laughs> right? But it's that ego part of me is like, I can figure this out. Why would I call somebody? I'll spend three days, you know, and I could have called, you know, a plumber and got it handled in an hour, right? Just some of what we do. Our zone of incompetence. Some of us have familiarity with that zone. Then, logically enough, the next zone is the zone of Competence, we can do it. Cool, so we do it. There's another zone, and that's the zone of excellence. We're actually really good at it. Now, here's the trap. Often, we get stuck here. We're really good at it. We're probably making some money at it. And so that's what we do. But Gay Hendricks puts forth an idea that says every one of us has a zone of genius. So, what does that mean? That means every one of us has a unique gift that when we're in that place, we experience greater joy, greater fulfillment, and are a greater blessing to the world. But we get stuck. And when we start to move into that higher level of expression is when we meet face-to-face our upper limit problem. He spoke about a man who he was coaching who had an insight. He got it. You know how when you get, when you get it, like, oh, that's why I'm on the planet. And, of course, then... It freaked him out, right? As it does all of us, you know. I always say your vision should both excite you and scare you. That's how you know you're on track. Because if if you know how to accomplish your vision, it's not big enough. It needs to be big enough that it's going to stretch you. So he talked about this man who was in this moment. They had this coaching session. He got it. And then all of a sudden, his upper limit started speaking. And so he's like, when should we have our next session? He's like, you know, I've got a lot going on right now. Let me, let me get back to you. I'll figure out my schedule. I'll let conditions determine when we get back together, blah, 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 right? Nobody ever does that. Two weeks later, the man had a heart attack and died. Now, this was a fairly young man in very good health. And he says, that, that haunts me, that experience because he saw it and he also saw his upper limit problem and didn't move forward. So sometimes our self-sabotaging behaviors aren't quite that dramatic, but we do stuff, right? Or we get busy with other things or we, we, we move on. So just be aware. I want you to be aware that as you're moving into your greater yet to be, into your greater self expression, into your larger life, you are going to meet this upper limit problem. Be not dismayed. I have good news. So how do we know what's our zone of genius? Would you like to know? Would you like me to tell you? Okay, just checking. Just didn't know. (laughs) You can go online. You can figure it out. But I'm here, so I'll tell you. Um, How do we know? First question, what do I love to do? See, this is what throws most of us off because we love something and it comes easily to us and we feel engaged in it because of our other limiting belief that says life is hard and meant to be a struggle. We say, well, this is too easy. Look at me just creating. So I was saying earlier, musicians should make music. 
It feeds their soul and is a blessing to the world. Artists should make art. It feeds their soul and is a blessing to the rest of us. I was just, one of the conversations I had with this gal who's an accountant. She's brilliant. She loves it. Now, this is like a whole foreign territory for me, right? This is, this is barely my area of incompetence, but sometimes I'm competent and I can balance a checkbook if need be. Um, right? That's her genius. She's a blessing. And if you've ever needed a good accountant, if you ever need a good tax preparer, they're a blessing. You see, so it's not the thing we do. It's is it fulfilling that which is in our heart to be fulfilled. So what do I love? <clears throat> what work do I do? Number two, what work do I do that doesn't seem like work? I was sharing recently with some folks that, you know, and when you're, when you're a minister, you get to wear at least six hats, sometimes eight, depending, you know, right? So there's a lot of things that go with this job. And some of it's this, which I kind of like, uh, and some of it's not this, <laughs> which I kind of don't like, but, uh, you know, right? But there's stuff that goes with running an organization and all that sort of thing. So no one is excellent at all of the, wearing all those hats, ever. You'll see when we hire a new minister, that person will have skill sets and gifts that will be very obvious and areas where they're not that great. We're just humans. So it's okay, but it's recognizing what do I love to do? What work do I love to do that doesn't seem like work? Can I do it all day without being tired or bored? So his spirit has been impressing on me that I'm to take my next step, to move out into the world to, after 25 years of pulpit ministry, to move forward. It's like, cool. Do I know how to do that? No, but why would I? You know, that's never stopped me before, uh, right? <laughs> because too often what we do is we allow our determinations, to, our decisions to be determined by how and what instead of why. You see, when you get clear on why you are here, then the how and the what begins to take care of itself. That was worth it. That was worth coming to, right there. <laughs> Sermon for another day. Third question. In my work, what produces the highest ratio of abundance and satisfaction to the amount of time spent? When we start to move into the zone of genius, we can give our gift, we can be fulfilled, we can be a blessing to others, and it takes less time, energy, and attention. How crazy is that? Now, I got to tell you, in order to start making this change, you got to let go of work hard, struggle, that whole Puritan work ethic thing is serving no one. It's about working smart. It's about working joyfully. It's about experiencing who we are and bringing forward our gifts in the world. Which sounds better? Lastly, we ask ourselves, what is my unique ability? You see, there's something that each one of us has that is unique to us, that is natural to us, that brings us joy and fulfillment that we are to bring forward. We've got to listen to that. We've got to love that. We've got to allow that. So when we're in that place, it's something only we can do. When we recognize our unique ability, when it's fully utilized and implemented, it provides enormous benefit to others. I want you to hear that. Again, one of the questions we have, well, how would I make a living at that? Wrong question. How can I be of greater service? How can I bring forth that which is within me? How can I give my gift to the world? And then greater good comes forward. 
So people ask me, you know, so I'm winding down this uh, reign of terror, I like to call it, and um, <laughs> I'll be here through the end of July, and then I'm stepping into my next thing, which, by the way, I'm getting good at this. So just in case you would like to stay in touch, there's an email list out front if you'd like to know what I'm doing and where I'm going. Um, you can sign up, and I'll, I'm putting, creating websites and email lists and all that kind of fun stuff. But what I tell people over and over, one, it's interesting. People ask me two questions. Why are you doing this? Right? Because everybody wants to fill in a story. And I tell them, because the same voice that told me to come here is now telling me to take the next step. I've learned not to argue with that voice. And the second question, I'm not sure why everybody asks me this, is are you moving? It's like, no, I live here. <laughs> I've actually, this is my home. I'm still in Salt Lake, so I'm good. So I find that fascinating. So I will be out and about doing my thing, but I know what Spirit is calling me to do is to give my gift as fully as possible. It has, I love you guys. I've said this time and again. I love this community. It's safe. It's comfortable. I've done this for 25 years. You think I could give another 25 years worth of sermons? Count on it. <laughs> Today, if you wanted it to, but you know. That whole thing about what do you love to do and you never get tired? I know you get tired of hearing me talk well before I do. So, you know, just saying. Right? So what I know and what I've said before is I can't stand before you and say, follow your dream, follow your heart, live your highest vision if I'm not willing to do that. So I'm excited about what's coming up, although I don't fully understand it or know what's going on. I'll be doing speaking around, and so if you need speakers, I'm, you know me. Give me a microphone. I'm happy. Um, I'm writing a book. I'm putting together a fabulous little website, doing webinars, all kinds of wonderful things because what I believe is that I need to take this next step because that's what Spirit's calling me to do. And so what I like to think is that I've been instrumental over the last six and a half years of creating a foundation and a structure for this community so that it too can take its next step. So we're putting in place the things to make this transition as possible, as, as smooth and as easy as possible. And I also know change is not comfortable, right? Oh, well, <laughs> it's still going to happen. That's what I love. You know, you can be uncomfortable in change or you can be comfortable in change. Either way, the change, the change is going to come, right? Um, so it's cool. So here's what, some questions I want you to look at. The second part of this is not only, uh, uh, try this again, I don't know, I, I really do need to stop drinking so early in the morning, I just, <laughs> hard to get through these things, you know. No. So first idea is as within, so without. Second idea is this, if you don't go within, you'll go without, right? That if we don't do the inner work, the outer never changes, at least not permanently. So we can have a change in our outer experience, but unless we've done the inner work, it can't stay. It doesn't last. We, we self-sabotage in one way or another, right? So if we don't go within, we will go without. If we are working from the old model that says, when I get the stuff pulled together, then I'll be good, it never creates lasting satisfaction. But by doing the inner work, by being willing to release those limiting beliefs, to be willing to embrace our larger vision, to be willing to redesign who we are and what we believe to be true about us is what creates the foundation for all of our greater good and for our lasting change. So here's some questions I would invite you to ask yourselves. Am I willing to increase the time every day that I feel good inside? You don't have to do it all at once, a little bit every day. Am I willing to increase the amount of time that my whole life goes well? Would that be okay with you? Okay. And then, now, now we're going to step it up a little bit, so get ready. Am I willing to feel good and have my life go well all of the time? Then why don't you? 
one step at a time. Again, it's just an upper, it, that ULP. So be not dismayed. We all have it. Now we know what to do with it. We push the boundaries. We spend a little more time feeling good. We feel a little more time experiencing our inner greater self. We do a little more every day of having the life we dream of and owning our power, owning that we are powerful spiritual beings who have the capacity to manifest greater good in our lives. Everybody got it. It comes as a package. It's called, hey, you're a human? Cool, I'm going to give you a human body and immense spiritual power. It may take you a little while or it may take you a long while before you figure out that you have immense spiritual power. The masters who've walked this planet over the ages figured out they have immense spiritual power. And we go, oh, they're cool. Let's pray to them. Right? <clears throat> so, my friends, it is an exciting time to be alive. The world is a mess. <laughs> let, us not, let us not pretend like what's happening in the world isn't happening in the world. But I also believe that something greater is happening because I believe more and more people are awakening to their inherent divinity. More and more people are looking to themselves to be the solution, looking to themselves to be their own savior. And as we awaken to the truth of who we are, as we release those limiting beliefs, as we open up to our spiritual power, as we live more and more daily in that awareness, giving our gifts fully, then I believe as that happens, we're going to see transformation like we could never imagine before. The reason war doesn't work is because it's based on an idea that you hold my good and I must kill you to get to win. It's a little simple, maybe just a little simple, but, you know, in some essence, right? When we go into our warlike state, we say, I have to overcome you in order to have what I want. The world that we are entering into is a world about cooperation, about abundance, which says there's enough for all, that cooperatively we work together to create a world that works for all. But I have to start with me. I have to be willing to give my gift. I have to be willing to contribute my part to the solution. My company is called Live Bold Solutions because I'm all about creating the solutions. It's not up yet, but it will be soon. <laughs> You know, I was saying earlier that people keep asking me, well, why are you doing this? And, you know, I say, it's funny because in my olden days, I had to get mad at somebody in order to make change. But it's just so apparent that Spirit is calling me to do this. And I know this process Six and a half years ago, I lived in Sun Valley, Idaho. If you've ever been to Sun Valley, Idaho, it's one of the most beautiful places on the planet as far as I'm concerned. And a little group of people in Salt Lake said, hey, can you come help us out? And for the first few years, I continued to live in Salt Lake City, I mean, in Sun Valley and commute to Salt Lake. I put over 100,000 miles in my car in those first few years working here, eventually moved here. You say, why would you do that? And I just say, yeah, it's very simple. The huge, the huge financial package that you offered me was just <laughs> too good to turn down. <laughs> I wanted to get on some of, in on some of that sweet ministerial cash. <laughs> it was because Spirit said, this is your next step. And I've learned this great line I use over and over, which is that love will pull you or pain will push you, but you must go through that door. Sometimes we create crisis in our life because we don't listen to the still, small voice when it's still and small. 
Your spirit always gently whispers to us. We're like, I don't want to hear that. I got a plan. I got an agenda. I got a life to live. Life blows up. We're going, hmm, maybe I should listen to spirit. Oh, right? It's all good. So my friends, I just want to say that again. I love this community. I've been, it has been the great honor and privilege of my life to serve in this capacity. And Spirit's saying, take your next step. So I'm taking my next step with great love, great compassion, and with a knowing that our greater yet to be is coming. I'd invite you to join me in that awareness. And I'd invite you to join me in the awareness that your greater good is coming. That Spirit is impressing upon you to take your next step to be more, to live more, to experience more, to express more. Say yes to it. With the full understanding that when you give a wholehearted yes, you will meet your upper limit belief. Be not dismayed. I have good news. It's just something we made up. Just like we made up something about my friend that makes $75,000 a year, just stuff we make up it means nothing until we believe it's truth. So, are you willing to start that now? Are you willing to live a larger life? Are you willing to live from your zone of genius? Are you willing to give your gift to the world? Will you say with me, I am ready. I am, ready. I am really ready. I am really. I'm so ready. I'm so ready. All right, well then let us pray. Get on up here, practitioners. If you are having doubt and concern right now, come see these people. They will pray you through it. Look at their old halos. Isn't that fabulous? <laughs> All right, you ready? This is it. Let us pray. As we move into that awareness of the ever-present reality that is spirit, that is the one life, that is the one love, that is the one presence, always expressing in, through, and as all of creation, we know that that life is our life right here, right now. And so we open our hearts and our minds to this awareness, to this sweet, gentle prompting of spirit as it impresses upon us greater wisdom, greater insight, greater clarity. And we know that by our divine inheritance, we inhabit a state of consciousness of peace, of love, of joy, of harmony and abundance. We are saying yes to life, even as it always says yes to us. We are willing to gently and lovingly release those limiting beliefs those outworn ideas that no longer serve us, to step into our, our spiritual magnificence. How grateful I am to bear witness to this spiritual truth. I know as we awaken to our spiritual wholeness that health and well-being are the order of the day, that we experience vitality, I know as we awaken to the truth of who we are, that we are abundant beings right here and right now, living in a divine state of grace and of flow, we experience this greater good. And I know that as we open our hearts and our minds to divine, unconditional love, we are healed and transformed. For we find it easy to forgive, to release, to allow, to see the divine in all people everywhere. So how grateful I am for this inner spiritual awakening. We surrender to our greater possibility and we name it good and very good. We give thanks for the many blessings in our lives, those that are known and those that are yet to be revealed. And we extend a blessing to this spiritual community to this divine idea that continues to unfold joyously, lovingly, and abundantly. I'm speaking the word of truth as I know that as we extend the blessing, we allow it to encompass the entire world. We bless our brothers and sisters, for there is but one human family. 
We bless the planet herself and all of her creatures and inhabitants. We're seeing the planet at peace in a world that works for all. And as is our tradition, we bless all priests, rabbis, ministers, teachers of all faiths and all traditions. For we know that where two or more are gathered in the presence of the one, God is and all is well. And so giving thanks for all of this, giving thanks for a law of mind operating upon the consciousness that we establish here, we simply give thanks, allowing it to be so, as together we say, and so it is.